All right, welcome back, everybody. Make it back. Yeah, like you're. Oh. Again, now five people listening. It's awesome. My apologies before I misspoke. Mr. Jeff DeGraff is here. Uh, we just shuffled a schedule around. So the most current and accurate schedule will live on the website or the ACSE app, not what comes out of my mouth. Um, if you followed the debate on talent management and officer development in the past few years, then you might know our next speaker. If not, I will fill in the details. Colonel Jason Lamb is the Director of Intelligence, Analysis, and Innovation down at Headquarters Air Education and Training Command in San Antonio, Texas. He's a command officer who is intelligent on many levels. Nope, that's not right. He is an intelligence officer who is commanded on multiple levels. <laughs> to some, he is best known for his uh, series of op-eds that he wrote under a pen name, Ned Stark, which I just learned was a Game of Thrones reference this morning. Shame on me. He, just, he uh, started a discussion on what should be valued and appreciated in officer development, a discussion that many thought was long overdue. So I present to you Colonel Jason Lamb, AKA Ned Stark. Thank you, Mo. So, exciting title. We'll see if it lives up. So the secret of success in leadership and life in general. There are actually two secrets Hashtag winning. The first, of course, being do not share everything you know. Moving on. What's interesting here, the, the quote we have for you up here today um, is actually provided uh, by Mr. Jim Rohn, who, leadership management guru, he could have easily been listed amongst the authors uh, that the Admiral provided us earlier when he was talking about doing his search. It really talks about the balance that you have to strike more succinctly than anything else that I've come across. And interestingly, not a college graduate. So I guess my mistake was the extra college degrees. Okay, leadership is about influence. It's not about authority. If you're leading based on authority, that's dictatorship. And the, the parenting model would be because I said so. Not, I mean, it is a technique, but not one I would recommend. Leadership at its heart is a relationship between the leader and the follower. It's a social contract. The follower is, is putting the needs of the team ahead of themselves, trusting that the leader is going to take care of them, right? So there's, there's trust, there's a social contract that, that we're doing something and we're committed to something greater than ourselves. So then, if leadership is about influence, exercising influence requires that we actually understand something about the people that we're leading, right? That we know what they value, we know what they care about, we know what motivates them. I mean, it's kind of hard to influence someone if you don't know those things. But I'd like to suggest to you that before we talk about leading others, you first, have to know yourself and, and how to lead yourself. So I, I like to throw up some um, old dead people quotes because they're smarter than me, so why make up something new? Uh, there was a Latin proverb, so really old, and I provided the Latin just to, just to prove my point. It says, it is absurd that a man should rule others who cannot rule himself. So pardon, pardon the gender preference there, that's that's the ancient Romans for you. But, but the point being that if you cannot manage, if you cannot govern yourself, you have no business leading others. You just don't. And then, like we talked about before, to lead yourself, it means you have to know yourself. So uh, one of my favorite philosophers, Socrates, uh, famously said, uh, know thyself, right? It's, it's old, it's, uh, it's an old theme. So I like to begin with one of my mentors, Michael Scott of Office fame. He says, there's always a distance between a boss and the employees. It's just nature's rule. It's, in, it's intimidation mostly. It's the awareness that they are not me. Um, world's best boss, bought for himself, outstanding. So what self-awareness actually is, is the conscience, uh, conscious knowledge of one's own characters, feelings, motivations, values, okay? It's who we are at our core. 
Sometimes it's hard to know until it's been placed under pressure, what you really know. We, we have things that we like to think about ourselves, but then you never really know till it's put to the test. Main obstacles to self-awareness. Uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect. So show of hands real quick. How many people have ever heard of this effect before? All right, you're better off than me. Uh, I found out about when I Googled it on last night. You know, but uh, actually, I knew a little, not entirely true. I knew about it a little bit before then. But the Dunning-Kruger effects is, uh, psychologically speaking, speaking, and I'll defer to Dr. Kim on this, so I am not an expert. Uh, it's the uh, belief that we are, in fact, better than we are. We tend to ascribe to ourselves greater proficiency or cognitive abilities than, in fact, we have. It's why bad drivers think that they're good drivers, or people who sing karaoke think they can sing. Um, the point being, uh, if, you, if you're not completely self-aware, chances are you are biased in your own favor. The other barrier uh, being our endless, seemingly endless capacity to rationalize and justify our choices, our decisions, and our behaviors. Stephen Covey, I think, put it best in, in saying that we tend to judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others in their actions. We'll ascribe motives to people, but for ourselves, we don't like to look at what we actually did. We like to look at the thought process that went in behind it. So why then self-awareness if it's so hard, problematic? Because it's the foundation, it's the basis for real leadership that is based in influence, beginning with emotional intelligence. So what is emotional intelligence? You hear people talk about it all the time. Oh, he has low emotional intelligence, you know, or so-and-so is really emotional intelligent. What does that mean? It's what, it, what emotional intelligence really is, is the ability to recognize and understand the emotions in ourselves and in others so that we can modify, moderate, change our behavior accordingly to help manage our relationships better. Okay? We, we've, we've all seen people, and, and for those of you who've read my articles, you, you, you may recall I talk about a, a uh, particular colonel that had failed to lead and had one of the worst climate assessments, uh, actually the worst in his numbered Air Force's history. Um, and he was well known. I knew his, uh, his chief um, who was advising him, and he would routinely interact with people. And he'd come out and he'd say, that went great. And uh, that chief was like, no, that was a dumpster fire. Uh, just the complete inability to read a room to understand what was going on with people. So you need, you need to be self-aware so that you can become more so, uh, emotionally intelligent. Authentic. Can you be authentic if you don't know who you are? There are a lot of leaders running around out there who are no longer who they started out to be. They feel like they have to be something that they aren't. They make a rank, and so they therefore feel like they need to act the part instead of just being who they are, genuine, down to earth, right? The real McCoy. If you think about the leaders that you've interacted with who have had the most influence on, on, with you, on you, it's the people that you establish a genuine connection with because they're real. They're not aloof. They're not detached. They seem to be who they portray themselves to be. They're not different at work than they are at home. They just are who they are. That's very appealing. And then the last one. This is also getting an increasing amount of press uh, as, a, as a leadership principle. Old things become new. If, if you do any reading on you know, some of those uh, uh, old dead guy quotes that I threw up there earlier, um, you'll see a lot about the importance of humility. And real humility comes from the appreciation, the understanding, and the acceptance that none of us is perfect. And that's okay. Real genuine humility is what allows us to grow and develop. Because if we try and convince ourselves that we're perfect, 
First of all, you'll probably experience what's called imposter syndrome, where you'll feel like a fraud because, in fact, you are. Uh, you can only fool yourself for so long. But then how can you improve if you don't ever recognize that you've made mistakes or you need to improve? So then, if, we, if you accept, hopefully I did an okay job, of convincing you that self-awareness is important, how then do you become self-aware? I like to think that there are three pillars, because I like three, I can count to three. Three's good. Uh, one is reflection. So we don't actually learn from our experiences. We learn from reflecting on our experiences. We've all done that. We've all had the conversations where, you know, you're like, oh, I should have said this, I should have done that. But we do it when normally we're in an emotionally charged state. We don't do it, for the most part, on a day-to-day -day basis. What went well during my day? What did not go well? What could I have done better? If this went well, what about it that I can replicate in the future? If it didn't go well, what do I change for the next time? Reflection. Assessments, there are a number of them out there. You can take your Myers-Briggs, you can take your four lenses. Um, there's also 360 feedbacks. Uh, most of you know that I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of those. Um, there's also things like the climate surveys, the DOCs, that are available to commanders if they wanna get a sense. You know, for, and commanders and the leadership team, so superintendents as well, right? What's going on in our organization? Am I being effective? The important thing to remember with an assessment is they, they only work if you're open to what they have to say, and to recall also that it's a snapshot in time. Because if you are learning and growing, that picture, that assessment is gonna change over time. And then last are those accountability partners, those people that you really trust to tell you, tell you how you're actually doing. Very important. Coach, mentor, significant other, someone that you will listen to and hear tough things because you know that they have your best interests at heart. The goal, of course, for those of you who've been through any sort of orienteering or been camping or been lost in the woods, understand the importance of triangulation. If you have a single point of reference, you might have a general direction, maybe, if you even know, remember how to read your compass. Uh, but if you get two points, you start to get a little bit closer. You have an ellipse, your, your circular error probable uh, starts to shrink. But three, ideally spaced, you know, uh, not from the same point of origin, is probably is going to give you your best that you can operate from. And of course, uh, my, uh, my GPS friends out there will tell you, actually, you know, you get four, you get, you know, your height as well. That's good information. The most important thing, though, that I want to I want to tell you all and reinforce for you all. Self-awareness, a snapshot in time, is only that. If you're not continually assessing, seeking feedback, incorporating that feedback, you, you aren't where you think you are. You just, you're just not. And the, the longer you go between those snapshots, uh, the greater the cognitive dissonance that you're going to experience because your input and how you're interacting is not gonna match with your mental image that you have of yourself. So you will read and pursue things that aren't necessarily what you need to read and pursue and develop in yourself because your sight picture isn't valid. So enjoy the journey. I mean, it's, it's an endless journey. I'm still learning things, okay? I am retiring at the end of May, uh, hanging up the uniform. Uh, but even to this day as a director on the staff, I am learning, I'm making mistakes. I'm owning them and trying to learn and get better. So never stop. It's a lot of fun. Some, sometimes it's frustrating, but for the, most part, for the most part, it is a lot of fun. So if I'm, if I'm gonna impart something to you that I've learned is that life and leadership is all about relationships. No person was created to be alone. One of the harshest and most cruel forms of punishment any individual can inflict on another is to completely isolate them from human contact. It's just awful, um, even for an introvert like me. So I see this and it fills me almost with a sense of anxiety. I have to interact with all the people? Uh, yes, because that's really where the value in life is. So 
Half of that relationship, of any relationship you have, is you. So get to know yourself. Embrace yourself, including your flaws. And uh, hopefully, can you all read that? If not, I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you very quickly. One of my favorite Dilberts. Uh, I am a Dilbert fan. The pointy hair boss says to Dilbert, I want you to give me an honest assessment of my leadership. 30 minutes later, Dilbert responds, like being stabbed by an angry clown while drowning in a septic tank. And the pointy hair boss goes back to Catbert and says, have you heard of honesty? It's terrible. Uh, the truth will set you free, but it's pretty harsh at times. Like when you go back to the gym after you've laid off for a while, you will, you will hurt in places that you didn't even know you had muscles. Um, but it gets easier, it gets better. Especially as you move, you, at, at first you'll reject what you hear, some of it, because we're, we're full up rationalization. But if you internalize what's being said, look for the truth even when it makes you angry, put the emotions aside, put your own biases aside, and look at the totality of who you are and seek that feedback, you will become a better person. You'll know you're there when you can honestly laugh at yourself and, and the silly things that you've done and, and the mistakes that you made and, and you welcome the feedback because you know it'll make you better. Don't take yourself so seriously. And for our four nation um, uh, partners and allies who are, who are here with us, if you have not seen the movie Stripes, you really need to. Because I think one of the seminal moments in there is when uh, one of the characters says, uh, call me psycho, if you call me Francis, I'll kill you. And the, tra uh, the drill instructor looks at him and says, lighten up, Francis. So don't take yourself too seriously. Take our profession seriously. Take your obligation to your airmen and, and your folks seriously. But never take yourself too seriously. And a last point I'd like to remind everybody, especially in this age of resiliency. It should always be an age of resiliency, right? But the, the focus that we have on it. Your yesterday, your today, does not define your tomorrow unless you let it. Don't surrender that kind of power. Learn from whatever mistakes, whatever's happening, the relationships that have been damaged, and choose today and tomorrow to repair those things, to learn, and to be a better version of yourself. There's always hope, and it begins with self-awareness and growing yourself. So like the Admiral, I wish you the very best on your leadership journey, whether you're just starting out or you're nearing the end of, of your time in uniform. You're never done with your relationships, and you're never done leading yourself or others. So with that, thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful event.